Hello, good morning. This is Miss Johnson here to do your interactive read aloud with you. So today I'm going to be sharing a book titled Aliens from Earth When Animals and Plants Invade Other Ecosystems. And this book is written by Mary Batten. Um, the interesting thing about this book is um, the reason why I chose this book is because remember I said uh, as readers we should pick books that interest us and we should approach the text with the anticip anticipation of learning something new when we're reading. And so I chose this book because in science this year when we get to our unit on ecosystems we actually learn about um, a lot of times when we think of aliens we think of um, beings from other planets but these are actually um, aliens that invade an ecosystem that they're not originally a part of and we're going to learn about that so you can approach the text in, in, in anticipation to learn something new about science that we're going to learn this year in fifth grade so aliens are everywhere these are not creatures from other planets but real living things right here on earth Aliens are plants or animals that invade another ecosystem. A natural community of plants and animals living in balance with one another. Scientists call these aliens exotics, a word that means to come from outside. They are also called invasive species. A healthy ecosystem needs biodiversity, a variety of living organisms, and a balance between predators and prey. Alien invaders can upset the balance of an ecosystem and threaten its biodiversity. For millions of years, living things traveled from one place to another, but never so quickly as today. Throughout most of Earth's long evolutionary history, animals walked, flew, and crawled across ancient land bridges from one continent to another. Carried by wind, water, birds, and other animals, seeds move from place to place. Over thousands of centuries, ecosystems changed. Some species became extinct and new ones evolved, but the pace was slow. Humans greatly sped up the place of alien invasions by becoming alien invaders themselves. The earliest humans evolved in Africa about a million and a half years ago. Homo sapiens, the species to which all modern people belong appeared in Africa about 150,000 years ago. As their numbers grew, people began to need more natural resources. Eventually, they moved into places where human beings had never lived before. They hunted animals, gathered native plants, and learned to farm. Wherever people settled, they changed the habitat. Over the centuries, people invented ways to go longer distances and to move around faster. When people began traveling by ship, they took animals like goats, dogs, cats, and chickens with them as well as the seeds of plants they wanted to grow. Unknowingly, they also took some stowaways like rats and mice. These migrations changed native ecosystems. Today, every living thing imaginable, viruses, bacteria, insects, plants, sea creatures, travels on the same planes and ships that carry people and cargo. Invaders move rapidly all over the globe. It is becoming harder to mountain the delicate balance in the world's ecosystem. Islands are especially vulnerable to alien invasions because they are surrounded by water Islands are cut off from other, uh, other lands. Their native species have evolved in isolation and have developed defenses to protect them from aliens. Until very recently in Earth's history, few new species were able to cross the miles of ocean to reach an island. But today, every ship or plane that goes to an island may carry an alien invader. On islands worldwide, invasive species have driven many birds, mammals and reptiles into extinction. Even a large island continent like Australia can suffer damage from alien invasions.
When people migrate to new lands, alien species go with them. More than 200 years ago, Europeans colonized Australia. Stowaway rats from their ships soon overran the countryside. Later, settlers brought over cats to rid the fields of the rats. Because they encountered no predators, the cats multiplied quickly and threatened the survival of native animals. As the numbers of those aliens increased, biodiversity decreased. The cats escaped into the wild and with no natural enemies, grew big and fierce. Today, they are about three times as large as house cats. In the, in the 1870s, the settlers introduced rabbits and foxes to hunt for sport. The foxes preyed on farm animals and have now spread across three quarters of the continent and caused more than $2 million in damage each year. The foxes and the wild cats feasted on some of Australia's unique marsupials and ate them into extinction. Today, Australia has more than 500 million rabbits, sometimes called the world's most ecologically damaging herbivore. These animals eat plants, destroy topsoil, damage farmers' crops, and wreck the habit of many native species. Hawaii, a state made up of islands, has been called the invasion capital of the world. Approximately 12 new plants and 28 alien species of insects are accidentally introduced there every year. European domestic pigs are among the earliest aliens introduced to Hawaii. Well suited to life in the island's wet forest, their population grew rapidly. Some of them escaped into the wild where they had a destructive effect on the rainforests. They rooted in the forest floor, digging up native trees and plants, which caused erosion and allowed invasive plants to replace native plants. The pits brought by early settlers dug at the starchy roots of native tree ferns and left behind hollow spots that collected rainwater. No one suspected that these little fern ponds would, would one day become a perfect habitat for mosquitoes, an insect that, that did not inhabit Hawaii at that time. In 1826, when sailors from the whaling ship Wellington rinsed out their wa water barrels, they unknowingly dumped mosquito larvae into the fern ponds. The mosquitoes bred there quickly. These insects carried a blood parasite that caused malaria in native birds, killing off several species. Many kinds of honey creepers, Hawaii's most famous birds, are now extinct. Because of alien invasion and habitat destruction, the extinction rate of Hawaii's birds is the highest in the United States and one of the highest in the world. So I'm gonna stop right there and just let you think about how these habitats have been impacted. And I want you to think about what caused that um, those birds to become ex um, extinct in Hawaii. And think about how humans impact ecosystems. And I want you to just think to yourself too about how as we as humans are living in our ecosystem, and I want you to think about any of any activities that you can think about that humans are doing that maybe are impacting the animals that live in the ecosystem that is right around you. Because this talks about our ecosystem. You don't have to live on an island to see an alien. You may find one in your own backyard. Although they have made themselves at home, starlings were once aliens in North America. In the 1890s, a group of people in New York decided to import all the birds mentioned in Shakespeare's plays. They brought in a few pair of starlings along with the other birds and released them in the New York Central Park. The people did not realize the problems the starlings would cause. The aggressive these aggressive birds compete with native birds for food and take over the nests of some species. There are now about 200 million starlings throughout the United States. Starlings also transmit a number of diseases that can affect humans, poultry, and livestock. 
researchers have, researchers have discovered that these birds sometimes carry a form of E. coli bacteria that can cause sickness in humans and other animals. These droplings of an infected bird can contaminate cattle, feed, and city environments. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to um, stop right there and ask you to think about um, the another book that we've read that talked about ecosystems this week. Um, the book because um, when the wolves returned and how that wasn't really an invasive species that they introduced, but sometimes humans can impact an ecosystem by removing something from an ecosystem. So anytime humans change the original ecosystem, it can have impacts that are negative. And so that's something for us to learn as we approach these nonfiction texts, that as readers, we're learning new information about how our actions can impact ecosystems and seriously change them and even damage them. Sometimes people import an alien species for research and then despite precautions, an accident occurs and the aliens enter the native population. Travelot, a French scientist who lived in Massachusetts, brought the first gypsy moss from Europe into the United States in 1869. He hoped to use them to breed a new kind of silkworm. Some of these gypsy moths escaped. Without many predators, the gypsy moth population exploded. In its caterpillar stage, the moth can eat the leaves for more than 300 different kinds of trees. Since 1980, gypsy moths have destroyed over a million acres of forests each year. The moth has spread beyond New England to southern Canada west to Wisconsin and south as far as North Carolina. It is easy for the gypsy moth to travel and eggs can, its eggs can be transported on cars, lawn, furniture, tents, backpacks, firewood, or anything that is used outdoors, even the soles of people's boots. So they're saying the eggs of these moths can travel. So if you're camping, it can get on any of your stuff and it can be it can travel to a new ecosystem just by living on your tents or backpacks or anything that you had with you and then you take you're introducing that into a new ecosystem so i'm going to stop right here i'm not going to read this whole book but i do have this book if you're interested and you would like to finish it so thank you for listening today and happy reading